might as well get going. So as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 01-20 and Act 92, and there's somebody in the waiting room, just a second. Um, 92, I, um, I state that this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting using the Zoom platform. And all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during the meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired, participate <coughs> in this meeting. And you can log in and join. Um, you can find the logins on the posted notices throughout town. You can go to the town website and find that. And um, you could also ask for a direct email from the town clerk. Of course, all you guys know that because you're here. So I don't know, I have to give that information now. But um, anyway, um, there you have it. And I have somewhere the agenda. So um, before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda as it was presented? Um, Dune? Yep. Um, when I mentioned to you um, that I wanted, I've got to find out um, by early April um, about the 4th of July, if possible. Um, should I just say I want to ask Julie to put me on the agenda for next meeting to, so I could ask about, you know, um, maybe sure. you might have. Okay, thank yeah. you. If, Julie, yeah. if you can put me on the agenda for next meeting for that. Sure. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. And anybody else have something they really want to speak about? I guess we have plenty on the agenda, so we'll just um, start right in. I, um, I'm looking for... Amy Wilk, she's not here yet because I know she has a school board meeting at 6.30 and she had some, um, I was going to let her slide in quick so she could bounce to that other meeting. So uh, ask me to send her the link. So I'm doing that right now. Oh, she just asked for the link? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, um, so while you're doing that, we could... Um, um, go on to the prior meetings minutes, which I um, found seem to accurately represent what what transpired. <laughs> I'd, I'd move to approve unless you guys have any additions or changes. Uh, are you talking about uh, one in particular? Because we're approving. I, uh, I'm starting with the select board ones, and then we'll go to the special okay. meetings. Yeah. So I that's move. the informational meeting before the select board meeting we're doing? Um, I was going to just do the select board meeting first, then I'll do both of this informational meetings. Okay. So this would be the minutes for the select board meeting. I didn't see anything wrong with them. I didn't either. All righty. So I move to approve. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. And then we had the meetings for that um, dynamic, interesting informational meeting, the first one previous to the select board meeting. That seemed pretty clear cut. I'd move to approve those unless someone has. Uh, I have a couple assessments there. Yep. Uh, in the February 22nd informational meeting on page two, article 16, uh, it was said that Frank noted selectmen have control. I believe Frank said selectmen do not have control. What? That's kind of a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then again on Article right. 30, this one is very minor, but Martha, uh, it, it was just a misspelling. Instead of the word N O W now, it's K N O W. So it changed the flavor a little bit. So those two are the only small adjustments. What, which article was that, Pat? Under Article 31, for where Martha had made a uh, a comment. Thank you. All right, so I'd move to approve with those 
modifications? I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we had one more informational meeting on the, um, um, I think this is someone wanting to get into the meeting. Let me. Uh, <laughs> Are you looking to get in on the meeting? Um, the okay, so so the meeting ID, you got a pencil? Um, no, I'm no, my computer is locked up in the meeting right now, so it's not a um. Um, the, um, could one of you guys email the invite to Catherine Shankman and Vic? Yeah. Okay. I just got a message from Vic too. So yes, I will. Okay. They're on the way. Yep. It'll be a forward and a forward. Okay. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we were, um, talking about the minutes for the second informational meeting. Yes. I didn't see anything wrong with those. Yeah. And uh, I would move to approve those. I uh, second. All in favor? Um, All right. All right. OK, we got those. And now we have um, the other people rolling in. And I see that, um, Amy, you are, you are, um, incognito in there somewhere where are you i'm here yep I, I'm I gonna, uh, now i'm back to myself <laughs> okay there you are there you are um so i'd like to um let amy jump in first with her request because she's got another meeting to go to so take it away amy okay great um so i'd like to uh this is about the um scholarships the two town scholarships the martin farms and the patrick scholarships and i'd like to propose that um we being the, um, the school and the administrators include those two town scholar senior scholarships with the rest of the, the scholarships that are being sent out to all of our seniors and that a committee be made up of uh, one school board, one select board and one alumni representative, um, which is what we did last year. Maybe that, that same group would be willing to, um, to do it again, uh, to review the applicants and to award the scholarships. Um, as I said, the two, Town scholarships are the Kirkpatrick Award, which is for a thousand dollars, which is actually a line in the uh, town budget, and the Martin's Farm Award. Um, in the past, a hundred dollars has been awarded for the Martin's Farms Award. Um, that scholarship resides in a CD in its original amount. Um, it's two thousand dollars, and the requirements of the scholarship is, or of this, the monies being at the will, um, is that the award the scholarship award is awarded on just the interest of that CD. That CD current value is $4,623.24. Um, so I'd like the select board to um, allocate an amount that they would like to uh, award that, that um, Martin's Farm Scholarship for. It is in a CD and as we all know, CDs are not gaining a um, huge amount of interest every year. Um, and like I said, in the past, it's been awarded at uh, hundred dollars. So I'm asking the select board to uh, go ahead and uh, basically let, let me administer these, these scholarships. Sounds good to me. Do you guys have any input? And Frank, was it you or, or Pat that w worked with Amy to, to assign those last time? It so was me. I thought it was you. Yeah. Are you still up for that? Uh, sure. I'm willing. Yep. Good with that. Any thoughts on the amount you would like to allocate for the Martin's Farm? I don't, I don't know why we don't keep it the same, hundred dollars. That's what my thought was. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Well, I thank you very much for um, putting me ahead in your meeting, as I do have another um, school meeting after this. So that does start at six thirty. If anybody wants to join. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Yep. Um, I don't see Catherine or Vic yet. Did you send them the? The most current link, Pat. I did. It took Asha's me a here. Oh. Um. Okay. Asha Labeja is here. Yep. No, that's not who we were looking for. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
Well, I think that they we know what they um, are here for, so I guess we could um, um, leave that till later. But um, usually it happens a little quicker than this. <laughs> um, so um, we have an application. Well, I guess it would be really nice to um, have those guys not feel left out. Um, since this is an open meeting, let me just give her a call and see what's up. I just sent them again. OK. I had sent it to Amy, so it's a kind of a forward and a forward and a forward at this point. Joan, do you want to just go with Joan at this time? Yeah, I suppose we should. Yeah, Joan, you're ready for acting? You're still waiting. She sent you the, the link there. Twice. Um, twice. Um, Pat Harvey sent it to you. I can tell you what the, the ID is and the passcode if you have a, have a pencil. Okay, it's 830-2264-6844. Is the meeting ID? And the passcode is 016193. 016193. 929 205 6099. Could you share that? Could you share that with Vic? Oh. Oh, he's a Vix in the, in the waiting room already. So there you go. We'll see you soon. Yeah, modern technology. Um, so Joan, yes. Okay, well, uh, not much. The report, uh, town did receive $170,658.01 from BTRANS last week, or maybe it was the week before, which is a little more than half of the final amount they owe us for Bethel Mountain Road. Um, so that's some progress there. And the only other thing I have to report is that the um, funding request, the application for a standby generator for the town office was submitted to the Department of Homeland Security last Friday. And we will probably hear sometime, it might be summertime before we know whether we have a grant or not. So what was that a grant for? I'm sorry, I was writing the other thing down and I missed the second one. It was for a the standby town generator office. for the town office. Okay, thank you. All right. That's all I really need about. Okay, all right. Um, thank you. Um, Tony Goofy, are you here tonight? I just sent him another, I sent him a link too. He just asked for it. I don't know what happened with the link. Yeah, I, I never got one. So, I was lucky enough to get Pat to help me. <laughs> Thank right. you. Well, we'll let him um, go. Well, let's talk about the application for the um, use of the park for the farmer's market this summer. And um, I, I'm, I'm in favor of, of continuing with that. Last year, um, when we did the different layout, when it was spread out more into the um, there's somebody else, more into the park to um, one for um, social distancing, but two, I think it did did it help the with the um, beating down of the grass along Route 100, or is that that area still just kind of shaded by those oak trees? It's still pretty shaded, and we did lime it this last fall. Yeah. So we're going to fertilize in the spring. So as much as we can stay off that front, I think the better off we're going to be. Yeah. So I so think even if, if there, you guys could put your put your thing out there, maybe rearrange it once in a while would be good. I yeah. Think, um, just for the health of the park. Dude, is that why Asha is here? Is there a formal application from them? Um, she, there I'm is. Sure. Yes, there was an application for the okay. use of the park from the. Okay. The thank farmers. you. Yeah. And I, I think that regardless of whether or not COVID restrictions are relaxed, I think we should continue to spread it out on the park like that. Um, one for safety, but two to see if we can't get the the, the grass to regenerate a little bit up um, where on Route 100. That's my thought. So, 
Um, Pat, you have any input on that or? Nope, you're right up my alley. You're good. All right, so I'd, I'd move to approve that application. So one, I'm sorry, one thing uh, really quick. Um, so I, I don't know how many of you have heard, um, Beth Frock has officially resigned um, as my co-manager. So I will be flying solo this year, um, which, you know, is a little daunting, but we'll be okay. Um, I have a lot of support from, you know, Paula and Kevin and a lot of the community. Um, we had intended to continue the um, setup as last year, uh, regardless of the COVID, the, you know, whatever regulations, um, whether they were relaxed or not, but we intended, people loved it. People loved the, the, the way we had set it up, the way we you kind of really came onto the park more. Um, uh, and so my intention was to continue that. The vendors really liked that. Um, and so uh, most likely I, I, I intend to just keep it pretty much the same as it was last year, regardless of what restrictions are lifted. I talked to Rhoda recently and she might be willing to work with you. She showed an interest in that if you were looking for, you know, some support. Um, I mean, I'm okay. I, I definitely, um, I, because we're not going to have um, activities and events again this year, most likely, um, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, I have a couple people who are have volunteered to help on the day of just with setup and in case I need to step away for a minute. But in all honesty, I mean, we're, we're, we're good. We work pretty well. Um, we're, you know, the same, a lot of the same vendors have been there. And, you know, so they kind of know how to, how to run the show. So yep. no, I'm glad you're, um, you're willing to take that on. So Asha, is there um, going to be, a, if I recall correctly, last summer you had like a entryway and there was a, a place to, you know, sanitize your hands and that kind of stuff right at the beginning. You're going to continue with that, right? Yeah, we're going to continue okay. with that regardless of what the regulations change. I mean, Beth and I actually were one of the only markets last summer that didn't relax any of the regulations. They did. The state came out and said that we could kind of skip a few things. Um, and other markets had kind of relaxed some of their restrictions. And we kind of just decided that since we had started the summer out that way, we would just continue. Um, and so I intend to just masks, hand sanitizer, you know, one way traffic. And it works, people. I mean, we only had pushback from a few people. Um, and so, but it worked. So we're just, I just intend to continue that with insurance, honestly. The one difference this year is that. Um, because I am by myself, I will be getting insurance to cover the market so that, you know, they don't come after me and my student loans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll pay your student loans. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, thank you. So um, again, I'd, I'd move to approve that application for the farmer's market to use the park. And I will second that. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Um, thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So we also have an application for a second class liquor license renewal and tobacco for the skip mark. Um, and that's pretty um, clear cut. I would move to approve that. I second it. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, now for the longer list of things to do, we have the um, um, appointments for the um, appointed town positions that have come up for renewal um, this year. And where did I go with that other sheet? Um, there it is. So we have um, um, had a couple people fill in some vacancies on the planning board and board of adjustment. Um, and they, um, the positions that they filled were coming due to be renewed um, this year. And that would be Christine Mayer and Greg White. And I would um, move to appoint those two. I think they're still willing to, and they've um, proven to be enthusiastic participants in the planning board. So second. 
I second that. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have a proposal. Someone approached me about filling the vacant spot <coughs> of second constable, um, Daniel Labeza, that works at the hardware store. Um, said that uh, he would like to fill that spot. It would look good on his uh, future resumes. And so I don't believe that any formal training or anything would be required. I think that he would just be the second constable. Um, so is, I is there an age thing on that, Pat? That's the only thing I, he asked me about it too. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna bring it up at the meeting tonight, but obviously he talked to you too, but. He's, he's over 21. Oh, he is? I didn't even know how old he was. He looks like he's 17. <laughs> I'm 21 during COVID. No bars to go to. That, that, sounds, um, that sounds great. Yeah, he's a sharp yeah, guy. I, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Um, one question. If I recall correctly, does he spell his name D-A-N-I-A-L? Asia, help us. <laughs> D-A-N-I-E-L, Daniel. I E L. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somebody I hear in town has a Daniel with an A in it. I apologize. An extra oh. A. I'm sorry. The problem with sorry. the last name. Just the first name. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I just don't like to misspell people's names. They get testy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We're kind of used to it. <laughs> That's good. All right. So um, for the water and sewer commissioners. Um, traditionally, we've had the select board to fill those positions. So I would um, move. N Nancy, are you raising your hand with a question? Because you have to appoint a constable also. Oh, um, no, I see. I, I missed that because of the, um, because of our second constable. So I guess for the first constable, I would, I would um, motion to um, re-up Dylan Dudley. I can second that. Yep. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. And um, but the, the town assistant, town clerk, and select board clerk, do we have to appoint them or are they elected? Julie appoints the assistant. Okay. Julie appoints the assistant. Okay. Is that something you want to do right now, Julie? Sure. Um, I appoint Kristen Lapel. All right. And then for the select board clerk, I would um, I would um, nominate Julie Smith. They're doing a good job. Thanks. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Aye. Next year, these are these are three year positions, though. Is that correct? Not the assistant. Not the assistant. Not the I assistant. think just the regular. Yeah. After the election next March, it becomes a three-year position. So um, back to the water and sewer commissioners, which traditionally are held by the select board. I would, um, Pat, you had a question about that? Or were you just exercising your finger? No, I did not. No, OK, yeah. Um, so I'd move to. Um, Assign that responsibility back on our shoulders. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And for the um, road commissioner, do either one of you have a burning desire to take that over? <laughs> well, I would. I would like. I would like to uh, nominate and appoint Dune Hendricks as both zoning administrator and road commissioner. Oh, thank you so much. On site <laughs> waste officer as well. Um, what was the third one? And we're not on site wastewater officer. Okay. And last but not least, local emergency management alternate. I believe oh. all. Those are due for this year, so. Yep, it's so uh, for me, okay. So just do I, I have a question. Does the select board appoint the zoning administrator or does the planning board do that? Oh. I, I think that falls on the selectman uh, 
if I remember when we worked with Earl. Sandy, you might want to correct me on that, though. I, I think all of those appointments are by the select board. Me too. Yeah, so, that's what I yeah. thought, too. Yeah. OK. All right, so we broke it up. So um, I got a bunch of attention. I, I think that um, another on-site wastewater officer, I would nominate Frank Severy for the second one. <laughs> Thanks, Doom. You're welcome. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Great. And um, I think that um, I would nominate Annie McKay as the Two River Ottaquichi Regional Planning Commission Transportation Planning representative representative from the town. And I said yep. Oops. Second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then um, well, it's actually a lot easier now that since we don't have to drive to Woodstock, but I, I volunteered to be the Trans Two River out of Queechee Regional Commission Transportation Advisory Committee so I could go with her to Woodstock. So I guess I would continue to do that even though we're doing it from home now. They I don't do know how long it'll go. Yeah. So what's that? That's the two, two rivers. Two River out of Queechee Regional Commission transportation advisory committee so basically okay. we're Annie is the representative to the town for two rivers and I'm the helper okay thanks um so um Jeff Gephardt has recently been taking on our um the energy um representative and for the town, and this is also represented to two rivers. So I would nominate him to continue on in that in that role. Yeah. I can second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, he has um, an alternative for that position, which is is you, Frank. I would nominate you to to um, keep in that position. Is that all right with you? Sure. Okay. Not a problem. All right. You second that, Pat? I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Um, and John, um, John White, I think, is next. Help, John, help out. Um, that one, it looks like that one is he's good till 10 and 10. Um, October, the end of October, is that right? That's we got a weird dating on that. Yeah, so we don't have to um, appoint it's, him yet. It's a state date. It's a state date. Okay. Um, and Vic, would you be willing to continue on as the emergency management director? Sure. Sure. The, the pay is great. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> We're going to double it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, may I quote you? <laughs> Can we can we also nominate Vic for the White River Valley Ambulance? Yep. You, yep. Okay. I would second those motions. Well, actually, I I. Yeah, it looks like it's I second. I'll second it. You second it. We got seconds. We got first. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We got Vic down there, and then we've got down here. There we go. Okay. The um, town service officer, officer known Paula Doherty. Frank, the state doesn't require that any longer. Oh, it doesn't? No. Okay. Yep. If you notice, it's not in your town report, or it, it, it is not going to be in your town report. Well, it's in there on my paper. Right. On the but it's, it's new this year. Okay. They don't require appointments any longer. So thank you, thank you, Paula, for taking that on for um, several years. Much appreciated. You, know, you made it to the end of that appointment. Um, <laughs> My uh, okay. um, Marvin is not around. As, um, he has held the post as energy coordinator and the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Advisory um, Committee. And do you think he would still like to continue on that? Is it's not um, it's not been taking a whole lot of his time, I don't think. I I guess we'll um we'll appoint Marvin. He's not here to say no, so we'll um if he's got an issue, he can um 
we can um, bring it up at another meeting. So do you have a well, second? What was that, that? again? And we've got again? Marvin Harvey for the energy coordinator, town energy coordinator, and the Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Advisory um, Committee. So, got a second? I second it. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 Yep, okay. And um, Jim Bowen, I see you for um, the recycling coordinator. Uh, do, would you like to continue on in that esteemed position? I don't know if you um, heard me, but I guess that's a yes. So, yeah, he's uh, you're, you're you're um you're nodding, okay, because you're you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I would move to um to point Jim for the recycling. Um, I say. All, all in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. And then um, Martha, would you yes. be willing to continue on on the park committee? No, I think we're good. I've been a one woman park committee for years, I guess. So why no, not? I'm hoping you're going to say yes. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I second yeah. that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Okay. And the on the recreation committee, we have um, right now it looks like Norm Christensen, Carrie McDonald, Joe Shankman, Meg Brown, Caitlin Vesser, Dean Mendel, Martha Slater, and Walter Pukshma and the tennis capacity. And I um, I would move to appoint those folks. And if any of them have an issue with that, they can um, bring it up <laughs> and, and beg out. I second that. OK, all in favor? All right. All right. OK. And um, I would like to nominate Jeff Brown as the animal control officer again. Happily second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And um, Tim Crowley had been holding the post for the Tri Valley Transit, and I haven't heard um, anything from him that he doesn't want to do that. So I would I would nominate him for that position. I can second that. Um, dude, dude, isn't that what's used to be stagecoach, right? Um, yeah, I believe that's correct. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor, aye, aye, uh, yep. and um, Jim Bowen, are you still willing to be the um, Werva alternate underneath um, underneath Vic? All right, so I'd nominate um, Jim Bowen to be the uh, Werva alternate. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. And um, I would like to nominate Norm Smith as the tree warden again. I second uh, that. I asked okay. it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Got him. And boy, there's all these people involved with making town work here. Our, our E911 maintenance man is Angus McCusker, and I um. I think we could safely nominate him to keep on with that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. And um, we got a green update coordinator of Nick Picuto. Uh, nominate him. I second that. He did a really good job last year. Yep. yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And we've got the. Um, the current um, budget and finance committee, which has been um, Lois Bond and Barb DeHart and Robert Mayer, Greg White, Jim Bowen, Rom Gardner, Vic Lobato, and Nancy Woolley, and then of course all of the select board members. And um, that's, um, you know, we're going to have to do it again in a couple months. So I'd, I'd move to nominate those folks to that wonderful task. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. And then our um, Tritown Energy Committee, um, Jeff Gephardt has stepped up to want to do that. So I'd nominate him for that. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
And we have um, our EC Fiber representative has been John White. And um, it seems like that's been rolling out pretty smooth. I don't know how much work that takes of him, but I'd nominate him to keep it up. I second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. And our official newspaper has been the Herald of Randolph as long as I can remember, and I'd, I'd move to, to continue on in that vein. I second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Yeah. And I okay. thank you. Well, Help. thank you, Martha, for all the work you do to, to um, <laughs> keep us all remembering what's going on. Hey, I've been writing the Rochester News for the Herald for 33 years now. <laughs> oh. A long time. All right, so that was a, a mouthful, but we made it through that. And let's get back to here. Um, now we get to the um, the interesting topic on the on the agenda is the what's going to happen with the high school building. And I'm I'm hoping that. Um, Vic and Catherine maybe have a report for us from the, the committee that's been uh, working on thoughts about that. Yeah, let me, hi, thanks for uh, inviting us and, and uh, let me start and I'm, I'm sure Catherine will jump in. I just wanted to, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the budget committee and it kind of takes me back because I've been uh, part of the budget committee for the last five years, I think. And every year we get to the end of the long struggle and we say, geez, you know, we're, we're getting older and slightly shrinking population and it just gets harder and harder. And what can we do to uh, help turn that around and attract people and uh, generate revenue for the town and, and uh, you know, make it a little economically more um, resilient in the future. And, and I really think that the opportunity we have before us to develop the high school site uh, is, is just the kind of thing that uh, could really be very beneficial. There are a lot of unknowns yet and uh, uh, but we have a very enthusiastic group of volunteers who envision this becoming a multi-purpose uh, facility that would be very beneficial to people who live here as well as to help attract uh, and retain new people to town. So programmatically, we're talking about a maker space using the shops and uh, art room facilities uh, and coupling that with a um, business incubator uh, to help uh, draw people who might want to get started with a, a new business at a low cost kind of way and, and develop physical products. Um, a child care center. Uh, we have a subgroup of four very enthusiastic young people who would love to see a licensed child care center, not only because they see the direct needs themselves, but their friends and they, they understand that this is critical to attracting new families to town. And you can ask uh, anybody involved in these kinds of projects around the state, and it's absolutely true. Um, we are, are looking into an adult daycare center for our senior citizens. Um, Catherine, who works in this field every day, understands that there's need for places for seniors who are mostly homebound to have a place to go for socialization and other kinds of care and support that is just not available here. And uh, we think that's an important need. And then also something we're calling the arts and learning uh, program, uh, which would help bring together existing artists and artisans uh, to develop new programs, to also uh, continue to be able to use the auditorium and other facilities there. And we wanna you know, think of a Green Mountain Suzuki Institute. It's been here for 15 years. And uh, if the high school goes away, so will they. Um, so I'd hate to see us lose that incredibly valuable asset to this town that has been coming every year and draws people from all over the country and some from outside the country. So, you know, no high school, no Green Mountain Institute. Um, the, uh, the other thing though, that it's, it's not a new building as everybody knows, um, it's going to need work. Uh, how much work for this purpose is undetermined yet. Uh, you know, the, the study that the school commissioned um, uh, put numbers to uh, what it would take to turn the high school into a modern, uh, fully uh, accredited school building. Uh, that's way beyond what we're talking about for this purpose. Uh, but we don't know what those costs are yet. And so we are applying for a, a planning grant, which would, uh, if it's awarded, would provide funds to do a, a facility space and uh, 
improvement assessment and also business plan so that we can determine, you know, are the ideas that we have in mind, are they economically feasible? Uh, and is there enough of volume and, and opportunity in the area to help make it go and what's it gonna cost? And, and what's the strategy for, for making it happen? So uh, that's in progress and, uh, and uh, you know, that once that work is done, we'll, we'll have some more reliable facts to go on. But the problem is, and I, I, this is where I'll, I'll stop and turn over to Catherine to add to it. The problem is we have a timing problem. I mean, the school board is pushing the select board to make a decision now, uh, which we feel is uh, premature, unfortunately. And if we had more time to do the work that's envisioned in this uh, grant uh, for planning purposes, uh, we would have uh, you know much uh, better footing to be going forward on. But uh, you know, if we could, uh, if we just get you know, a break on the timing, I think everybody would be more comfortable here. So let me stop there. Captain? Can't hear you, you're muted. No, I just unmuted. Okay. So, so I think one of the things that uh, has concerned us was the recent decision to turn off the power and the heat as of July 1. And of course, uh, it's very difficult to proceed with uh, the plans that we are working on uh, with that kind of situation. We don't want an abandoned building. And uh, Pat and uh, Vic and I uh, met with uh, uh, Nathan Cleveland uh, on Friday to discuss all this and what we need to get together for the planning grant. Now, Vic just said this, but I'm going to restate it. So the planning grant will give us the funds to do the analysis that needs to happen on many levels. Right, it's going to help us uh, uh, with the space plan. It's going to help us with the environmental uh, review, and it's going to help us develop the business plan. And within that, will also be a marketing analysis. So that will give the select board a lot of very uh, hard factual stuff to the best as you know as anybody could give at that point in terms of what their risks are and what uh, what the strengths are. Uh, and we understand that the select board needs to have more uh, hard and fast information. So, you know, it was my understanding when I read through the planning grant that um, the, the optimal way to do it is to do the planning grant before acquisition takes place. And of course, the school board is, is pushing us to take acquisition. Now, there isn't a hard and fast thing. They will be working with us, but um, it seems to me, and I suggested this to Nate, uh, what about the town of Rochester put, making some good faith gesture to the school board? For instance, you know, the town of Rochester offering to cover the electric and heat for the next year, which will be nominal since there's no real use of the building happening. And, uh, and also the planning grant will include funds for the environmental review. The school still has an underground oil tank we don't know what the outcome of that review is going to be. We don't know whether there's been any leakage. So in a, in a lot of ways, it's to their advantage to work with us uh, towards this end so that we have the time and the funds to do what is necessary to plan for the acquisition and the repurposing. And included in that planning grant is a hearing with the whole town so that uh, there will be a chance to air everything publicly, which I know is a great concern to everyone. Uh, Dick, did I leave anything, or Pat? Is there anything I left out here? I, I have been very happy with Vic to make multiple presentations this week to different boards and organizations, and we're, we're getting a very positive response. We're getting emails just about every day with people who wanna join in the work. And uh, that's been very reassuring and, and, and uh, affirming to the fact that this looks like a potential thing for us going forward. Uh, for sure, you know, uh, it's a brick building. It's not gonna disintegrate like, you know, like the Wayhauser is. And, and uh, we will be prioritizing some of the capital fund uh, uh, work that has to happen on a timeline. So it doesn't all have to happen to to be functional, we didn't close the school because of the building. We closed the school for other reasons. It's still a functional building. Right. Um, Catherine, um, as a well over 30 year member of the White River Valley Players, I'm very anxious to see 
you know, whatever we can do to, to take over the building and keep it functional so that we can have a, when COVID's controlled, we can have our performance space back again and that kind of thing. So, and that was, I think that was mentioned before. Yes. Um, so um, yeah, I think there are a lot of people in town who would agree that this is something that, you know, is an important thing is to, to make that building into a functional space. And there's a lot of good, I, I think the committees come up with a lot of really good ideas. And the, and the, we also want the elementary school students to continue to have access to that, that building for their um, music and art program. And, you know, Green Mountain Suzuki would like to come back this summer. We, we would hate for them to have to find a different venue and lose them. They've offered to pay, you know, not only the traditional rent, but to pay to clean up that building, which I don't know whether anybody on this board went through the, the walkthrough, but it was as though the kids were in there just yesterday. Things were just sort of left. That it, there's extensive cleanup that's necessary. And Green Mountain Suzuki Institute has offered to pay for it. So they want to use it from July 11th to the 16th, I think. I have been in touch with the school board um, about the Suzuki, um, although I, you know, I have no control over it. Um, I, I have made a plea on Suzuki's behalf and the select board's behalf that uh, they reconsider, you know, cutting the utilities through the building in July um, because they gain income from the Suzuki. So it, it just didn't seem to make much sense to uh, cut it cut it off that early. I know that they're looking at uh, the beginning of the budget season. Um, so I I did I did plant that uh, seed and hopefully it blossoms into something that brings the Suzuki back. Um, I'm not sure they even just realized what they were doing. Um, I also want to uh, say hey to Kirk White, who's also going to go to bat for us and um, has already provided us with a, a couple links, a couple sources that uh, the state of Vermont <coughs> with. And we will continue to <laughs> work you a little bit hard, Kirk. We're coming. <laughs> That's all I have to add. Dick and Catherine are very much up to speed on um, the path that they have been down and the path they're going to go down next. So the um, the mentioning of the the um, the grants you're the planning grant you're applying for, and it seems to me the critical part of that, which would uh, which would be the, the hearing or really to get feedback from the town on this issue, which I think is something that would have to happen anyway before we would decide to buy that building regardless <coughs> of what what the plans are for it. But there's um, the time frame for that that grant that that stretches out um, I assume beyond their their um, deadline of April 2nd now we've got them to extend their their deadline for us making a decision by a month to April 2nd in light of their um, we wanted to hear what was going to happen with the Stockbridge vote to to dissolve the union yeah. um, but that still is not that's only three weeks away that's not enough time that um, yeah. Yeah, you know. that's, that's the timing dilemma I'm referring to, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, also, I think there also is an appeal coming forward for to rescind the vote that Stockbridge took and maybe do another vote. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I think that's on the table at this time. And plus there's a <laughs> lot of issues with having to subdivide it. And if the merger's up in the air, I don't see how we can progress forward with it at this time anyway. And, and we do need to have a, a meeting and a town vote on whether or not they're interested in proceeding with this, especially if you think that we need to put some money into it um, because I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. Well, that's my uh, feeling on it. Uh, um, so I'm not opposed to the idea. You guys are doing great. I, I like that concept, but I think the timing is going to be a tough one to follow. The, mm. the merger, if the merger dissolves, it won't dissolve for another year anyway, due to budget items, I would think. I mean, there's no way 
you can come up with a new budget between now and the, the time that the fiscal year starts again for that. So we'd have to reelect the school board, I would think, if the merger destroyed, you know, breaks up. So there's just a lot of issues here that I see are problems. Well, doesn't Rochester have to vote on the merger as well? I, it's not just Stockbridge making that decision. And if we, Rochester, which has a larger vote, uh, doesn't want to uh, demerge, then what happens? Well, we do. You're right, Catherine, we do. But they also have to go through their appeals process. And if they're going to appeal it, then they'll have another 30 days where they have to schedule a vote in the town of Stockbridge to revote the issue. I had an email from Carrie McDonald tonight, and this is on the discussion. It's on the agenda for that meeting that they're currently having in Stockbridge. And apparently a lot of people in Stockbridge are not happy with the um, decoupling vote. I'm recording, so um, uh, I probably will have the information on what was discussed in that meeting uh when they're done um I think that uh, also I, I think there's some real ramifications here for rochester regardless of the vote i mean if if they stay if they still want to decouple the merger or destroy it i we have to really think hard on that whether we want to do that or just keep the merger and make enemies there or you know end the merger <coughs> but if we do end the merger i want to get some hard facts from the supervisory union on what that entails and what the costs are of that too in the ramifications because if we choose to demerge we're not only affecting our town but we're affecting the towns north of us too which is they, something there's like 30 kids that are tuition kids that come from north right that's not a matter that's actually on the on the select board's table at the moment but um whether no. there's a vote to demerge or stay together that high school building will be separated from the elementary even if we get our own district back we're only going to have an elementary school um i don't see us as as taking a different path than the one we're already on whether we are still in a unified district or we're a standalone district, <laughs> um, the high school building will still need to be repurposed either way. So I, I don't think that the merger has anything to do with how we're proceeding with the investigation of what to do with the building and then eventually the decision of what to do with the building. Well, it does, Pat, because number one, you've got Stockbridge and Rochester as a unified district. And if you split that unified district up, it's just the Rochester district then. And the school board has to come through to do the changes that they need to make in the subdivision. That's on the school board. Now, whether that's the unified district school board or the town of Rochester school board, there is a difference. So I don't know how we could proceed when they haven't subdivided it yet. There's no implication of what they want to, you know, how they want to do that. And I don't believe, and Dune, you can correct me on this. I don't believe they've approached the, the uh, select for or the, the zoning board for subdivision at this time. Sandy, you want to speak to that? Yeah, uh, uh, Frank, we did get an application on Friday um, for a subdivision. Um, so we just got it. Um, that means that we can we can warn it for our April 6th meeting, um, and we're in the process of communicating with them on that. Yeah, still the whole um, frustrating factor I find in this is the um, the push to insist that the sale of the building happens now and not allowing time for the proper unfolding of the research and, and the planning that would go into a, a really logical evolution here. It seems mm -hmm. like um, the, the school board is, is this knee jerk attempt to, to balance their budget by, by you know, shedding that school. It's, that's, um, 
you know, that's that's the frustrating part here because it's um it's one thing to say, okay, this needs to happen and let's figure out how that can happen, but then to try and threaten us, it's like, well, if you don't make your mind up now, we're just gonna sell it to Joe Blow, you know. Yeah, it's like twenty twenty thirty thousand dollars out of a four million dollar budget. That's how you it's say. really um, a symbolic it's, issue to me. It's not a real financial. Yeah, issue. I, I hear you, Vic. I, yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. But I I don't like the push either. I think it's really it's just not a good way to go mm. as far as I'm concerned. Well, but while we're exploring what to do with the repurposing building, Vic and Catherine are coming up against a brick wall on a lot of these things that can't go beyond that brick wall unless we at least have an option to purchase the, pr the property in hand. Right mm -hmm. now, everything is still very abstract because we have no power to get any of this grant. We, we you know, it's getting hard for people to even want to talk to us because it's all in theory. Mm -hmm. um, so if we were to go into an option agreement and not take possession of it by July 1st, but at least have the option in our hand so that we can pursue um, the repurposing committee can continue to operate. And they're, they're coming against something that they're, they're not gonna be able to go much further with it until they right. have it seems that with we have that option now and that we have the right of first refusal we just um they want that commitment that well, yeah. that, op that options agreement would it, yes we've got it in the merger but it seems like is we're on a teetering thing because they're wanting some they're demanding some sort of decision from you by a deadline and then they're going to turn around and do whatever they're going to do but if we actually create a secondary uh, option agreement related to this, uh, you know, this planning grant, then then maybe we can do some good faith gestures towards them so that we have the sense, both boards, of working together towards the same end, Rochester acquisition of the building. In other words, instead of just saying, I won't be pushed and while they're pushing if we could find some place where we're actually softening our relationship after all it's the unified district so rochester is part of the school district and then there's rochester the town so we have a lot of representation all around well do we um do we call a meeting a, you know a town meeting to gather the you know dispense the little bit of information that we do have and, and get the town's actual feeling for, for this this move, movement. It, it seems premature in a way because it would be um, much more practical like is what Vic was presenting about um, real options about what could happen. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think calling a town meeting now, um, it's just gonna be a lot, so many unknowns, you know, who's gonna get comfortable with that? Right, right. I agree with you on that, Vic. I do. I, it's just, I, it's this is a, a tough one to move on at any time right now, and I, I do think we need the input from the voters on this. But I, I would like to see a more, uh, I don't know what the word is or what what I'm trying to say is basically a more concrete, uh, you know, solution rather than you know. A lot of, um, you know, unknowns. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. Well, that I mean, th that's what the planning grant is going to give us is significant money, so that we can actually get the professionals in there and knock out the numbers, which but, is what are, you want. Are, are you so, saying that? What about the fact of the select board and the school board meeting together for only one purpose to talk about this? I mean. Our boards actually even meet on the same day. The, the, one of the problems is a total lack of communication. Well, I, I don't think the select board can can just say, yeah, we can buy it for a dollar without going through the voters. I'm, I don't think that's a good I'm way to I'm not saying that. I'm saying to find a way forward so that we're that we know they know that we're working in earnest towards this end and will work with us and put the pressure off. So yeah. that this thing can actually happen in a reasonable way. Yeah, it's all about timing in my mind. And to give it a, a fair examination and and a proposal that uh, you know can be presented with some confidence, and uh, then let the folks decide. I, I totally agree that town as a whole should should have 
should have the opportunity to weigh in on this. It's a big decision. And um, I think that, you know, we, we just don't have the time right now to get this done by April 2nd or April 3rd, whatever that date was. It's just not feasible. So Catherine, were you saying that the select board and the RSUD board should meet together and, you know, come up with an idea to put before, you know, not anything definite to vote on, but, you know, for an info meeting for the town, you know. Come I, up think, I think that, that, that there's something to be said about having these boards meet so that can actually represent directly to each other what their issues were are. So, I, I mean, we don't even understand this pressure because there was a vote to demerge on top of everything else, which just, you know, after we're trying to appease them, and, you know, the building was closed down, the, the vote for the power off, and still there was a demerge vote. I mean, come on, what is it you guys want? Yeah, no, I, I think the, uh, the Catherine's point is that to see if we can't negotiate something to that would, in the end, allow more time for a reasoned approach to a plan for the building. I mean, we are operating in good faith. The planning grant is due on April 13th and the, their board meets on June 2nd, I think, and I, or in June, right? And then the next step, would, once we do that, we get the money to, to hire the consultants, the next step would be the implementation grant. And that's a whole lot more money. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it can, and, the, and we just keep going forward. But realistically, what, Talking to Nathan and understanding what other towns, the process of other towns to do this very similar thing, <laughs> it cannot happen overnight. But yeah. I think once the planning grant results come in, the town will have the information they need to make a, uh, you know, an informed vote. That's what we want, an informed vote. Nancy? Well, I think we also have to understand that we will be having a vote ourselves. By reason of the Stockbridge vote, we're now required to have a vote here. And that has to happen within 60 days of their vote. So sometime in the next seven weeks, we have to have a vote as to what our wishes are. That's, that's on the if, if they go for a revote, then I think that delays our vote. It does. It does. Yeah. <laughs> that may happen tonight. But in any event, at this point, we haven't even been given the, I don't think we have been given the information to do um, a decoupling vote. I, I understand that we would be notified by the Secretary of State that we need to, to conduct that vote. Right. Well, we're one week into it. Yeah. So, so I've got a question for the select board um, with respect to this uh, demand of the school board for you to make a decision. And it was April 2nd, and now that's, a, that's no longer uh, the case because- No, it is April 2nd now. It was May 1st, and um, we, oh, March, um, March. we approached them and, and claimed that in light of their um, vote on the ballot to demerge that um, we needed, um, we requested that deadline be pushed out and they they did push it out yeah dune you said may i think you meant march right yeah i was gonna say march yeah sorry yeah okay so they pushed out so that that when the new deadline comes up they're still going to want something from you yeah. they're going to want an answer and they feel that if you don't give them the answer they're looking for they're free to put it up on the market so what's going to stop that nothing so and that and you're okay with that? We've had this conversation in an executive session, and I think there's some things that we just can't say at this time. I mean, but we're not. I I personally, I'm not okay with that. But I'm not at. Um, I can't just give the dollar on behalf <laughs> of a town, you know, without the 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 weight of the town making that decision. And right now, we don't have a. A clearly informed decision. It's um, I mean, go can go back to the school board and and try and explain the um, the um, the irrationalness of their their demands that they expect us to be making a, a educated, uh, realistic decision and take on that building. Why won't they give us the time to do that? 
Mm-hmm. And I as that been, I thought they're all about education, right? Has that mm-hmm. been stated in in writing to them? Not in those words, but it, we in writing we did um, when the vote appeared on their um, to demerge. We you know made that point that um, we need to understand what is happening here. I don't have the exact text in front of me, but um, yeah, we could. Um, end this meeting early and I'll jump into their meeting and, and make a bunch of noise. You know, okay. I'm sure it's still going. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're all marathon, always a marathon. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, it's not, um, it's, it's not something that the select board can just say, oh, well, let's just mm-hmm. buy it for a dollar. And, and um, you know, we, we need, um, you know, we need to have this properly planned out. So yeah. there's, two th- there's two things here that are coming to my mind. Yes, we need more information to really make a town informed vote on the repurposing of that building. But, but there may be another vote, which is, should the situation be, does the town want to retain the building to pursue a possible repurpose or to sell it for themselves? Or does the town w- okay with you know the, the school board going and putting it up on the market? Because I think the town might vote that they don't want that outcome. They don't want to simply have the, the building go into a commercial market. So there's really two things here. But that meeting still has to be warned. Well, that's not a problem. So we're 30 days plus yeah. in the morning, a meeting of that mm-hmm. type. Because of this revote, you mean? No. When you have town meetings, there are laws that require periods of time when you warn meetings. Um, am I correct that if, if, for example, if we did go ahead and, and do a, a warn a meeting, we'd still have to do it via Zoom? Um, probably, yeah. Okay. I would think so at this time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wondered. It would have to be an Australian ballot vote. Oh, an Australian ballot vote. Okay. Yeah, we'd probably end up having more informational meetings like we did for the town meeting and then do the, the paper vote. Yep. Well, we could rent a tent. <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a lot depends on how the, the subdivision goes too and what's got to happen with that. And, and also what that is tonight entails. with Stockbridge. Well, I don't even understand how you can go ahead with acquisition when you don't even know what it is you're acquiring. Well, in terms that's of another the issue. Tax. There's there's no clear, um, you know, they're asking us to buy something that is undefined right now. Right. You know, um, so it's. Um, hey, at least they're only asking a dollar for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're, but they're asking easements, aren't they? Uh, yes. They are easements, and it's it's still not um, it's not clear that what they propose to the planning board is is an acceptable subdivision. Well, what about pushing that through? I mean, you say it's going to happen on the uh, the when is the planning meeting coming up? Another April month. 6? April six. April six. April six would be the would be when they present, um, and I'm not sure. If, well. The, it's possible that they won't be able to answer all the questions at that time, uh, and there's a certain, and even if they were, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be probably decided that day. So when right. you when no, do they, 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 put, they push the meet the, the 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 deadline for, did they push it to May because they you can they cannot be expecting an answer from you on April second when they're not even going to meet with the planning commission until April sixth. That seems. Well, and then I think, isn't there a, a, a public hearing for a subdivision with the neighbors? That would be the public hearing. That would be the public hearing. Yeah. Well, to us was that we would be taking the building contingent on the subdivision being intact by June 30th. So it, that's that was all part of what they were proposing to us mm-hmm. is that you know, all of the ducks would be in order by June 30th, and then we would just, you know, take over the building with all of the, with all of those chores that they have to be done. Including the underground oil tank? I wish they would have, looking at that last fall. (laughs) 
I, I, I was um, oh. under the impression that would be part of the um, the agreement was that that would be dealt with before they sold that. And and they were promising in in their last proposal to us when the, in February that those things would be done by the end of June. So is that part of our contingency, the oil tank? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So then there can't be an acquisition till they meet their part of the... Well, I, I see it's like any other real estate transaction. You have your know, contract of sale and then their contingencies they have to be cleared before you go to closing, right? That, right. Yeah. Right. And closing being June 30th, they're giving themselves that many months to get these things done. Yeah. If they're not cleared, the parties can negotiate an extension to the closing. Closing date. Right. So then it is conceivable for Rochester to warn a meeting and have the town come together with what we're doing or, and, you know, whether even the decision to acquire it, you know, that even if you, you, if, if things aren't going to happen till June 30th anyway, I don't understand the problem with that. With, with what? Having a, t a warned town meeting. I, um, I think you need more information, Catherine, and more, I, more of a, I mean, you have a, a set, few things set moving forward, but I think you have to come up with some more, some dollars and cents so you've got some idea of what you're dealing with. That's true, but if you take it by two approaches, the one is just the town decision to acquire the building, then the second would be the town's approval of the repurposing of the building. In two steps, two votes. Well, the town may end up owning the building because of the demerger. Right, right, right. We may, <laughs> we may end up owning it without having to spend a dollar. And then we'll <laughs> have That's to take care of the oil tank ourselves yeah, yeah. and you know, of course we pray the subdivision um maybe we'd have to buy the subdivision expense from the the rsud um they've got quite a bit of money into du bois and king and mark bannon engineering um to develop the secondary septic system and um the subdivision so um we, we would have we would have to acquire that from them and what about this uh, talk that I heard from the school board about emptying the building of, of everything? I mean, there, we don't want to buy an empty building with, with none of the supplies that Rochester purchased. Right, they called for an, uh, uh, an inventory of all the contents of the building and they're gonna start um, selling off stuff from the building. Um, they did, and, and that's fine. If we're going to do a delay tactic, I guess they can go ahead and do that because it's, there's been no definition about the contents of the building. If we were to use it as a school, you know, they're going to get $5,000 for the, the desks and everything, and it would cost the town $500,000 to re-equip that school. So that's really good. But the one thing that I'm going to take exception with is that they want to remove the lockers. Uh, <laughs> And sell the lockers because they think they're worth a lot of money but um lockers to me are like kitchen cabinets you don't rip off the kitchen cabinets when you sell your house so the lockers are attached to the wall and i believe that they are part of real property and stay with the building so Patty, um oh i'm sorry when you're talking about things that are in the building if I if I understand it correctly, the White River Valley players still own a great deal, still have a great deal of equipment in the you know the storage area for the auditorium above the stage and things like that. You know, um, we better get it out. Uh, oh dear! And all the the desks and chairs, the Green Mountain Suzuki Institute needs needs all that stuff. I mean, I just don't think it makes sense. Uh, the shop, the shop tools. Uh, I mean, that, that's what I mean about that, that the board actually meeting. It just problem. feels like it's become very aggressive and strange. Yeah. This whole thing is being orchestrated by a very few people. I feel like they're coming into our town and trying to tell us what to do, and that's not fair. Well, they've done it. Mm -hmm. You're the newspaper reporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can't say stuff that's not, in, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you can say factual things, and the factual things, if they were in print, I think 
more and more people would really understand the stakes that we have in front of us because I don't think it's widely understood at least at all. I really don't. Well, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to get more information about this from from other people too. You know, I I can't. Um, this is just what's happening at our select board meeting. But uh, I'll see if I if uh, my boss would let me write something else. I'll find out. You know, I wondered, I wondered as, what, uh, Sandy, um, as you're talking about the contents of the building, we were just talking about the player stuff. Um, I don't think we want them to, to take down all of the stage lighting and sell those pieces. No. In, um, in the well, exactly. That's 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 big bucks. And they've been there a long time. And so I just I, I don't know, maybe it's appropriate Dune for the select board or somebody to write a letter and say, you know, you know, before you do that, you know, we, we need to talk about this because mm -hmm. And after Irene, the players spent a lot of time raised a lot of money to redo a lot of things in the auditorium, including seating and things like that and the stage. And you know, there are I don't know, it's just Stockbridge does not care about that. Is only one town out of a unified district. I, I don't really understand this. I, 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 I thought maybe the root of this whole thing was a fear of Stockbridge that the state was going to close down their school and they'd have to join with Rochester. And maybe that's why they need, you know, the high school to go away because they absolutely don't want to envision a future where they have to come here to go to elementary school. I thought that maybe that was the root fear because it's so, there's something that's really giving it so much power. It may be they want a K to 12 choice school. <laughs> that's what they're going to end up with. But um, that's why I brought up the contents because I thought it would be an issue that a lot of uh, different entities may have an opinion with. And so right. I did want to bring that forward for everyone, not to stir up a, uh, any more controversy, but a lot of people needed to know about that. Yeah, well, what grounds for a conversation between the two boards, I think. I did have a conversation with a school board member the other day, and they said there was no interest from the school board to sell anything off in the building. And that's what she told me. And she said there was a lot of misinformation out there. So I don't know where everybody gets their information and, and that, doesn't really. In a school board meeting. That's where it is. Okay, well, this this uh, person was just the other day. She said things have, have not are not as uh, robust as they were. So, and I don't know, <laughs> this is just what she told me. So tonight and go there. I do think it's a good idea to have things in writing, especially addressing the uh, the equipment in the school so that there is a clear understanding of what what the Rochester Select Board expects, you know, and uh, and in terms of stirring things up, I don't think we should stir up negative energy, but we should stir up awareness in Rochester. Awareness. I think there's a lot of people who are just not aware. So hence the... Um... Hence the uh, the need for for informational meetings, or maybe um, like um, like we did with COVID, actually sending a mailer out through town that gets to the people that aren't um, on Zoom, aren't on Facebook, you know, aren't going to meetings. I think if if we could afford to do it, a, some sort of a mail a mailing from the committee, et cetera, that went went out to all the taxpayers, voters, whatever. But again, we would need we would need more information. We would need the actual proposals that that are concrete and what we're what we're looking at. It doesn't do any good right now. Yeah, you just send out a lot of big information. I don't think we need some advice from our lawyer at this point. Because mm. if we're going to draft anything, I think a our, a chat with our lawyer should be in order to figure out what our move forward should be. Well, I think there's a lot of good information in this in this draft attached to your emails today. RHS repurposing project. There's a good start right there. Um, 
incredible information for townspeople. Can can we put that? I mean, I know that Julie really liked it. I mean, I shared it with her the, on voting day, and she asked actually us for us to come to the meeting tonight and to talk about the ideas. Uh, can we start with that? Can we put that out publicly to really say, you know, this is this is what's being talked about proposed. This is what's being developed, and this is the and this is the actual situation right now. And we'd like to hear from the town. <laughs> we would. We'd like to hear from Rochester. Other than in a vote. <laughs> yeah. Send us things in writing. We could have that. We could create a way for people to respond to us so that the select board would know. That's a very good idea. Martha, I think you've got an article here. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just thinking, I think I got that email that had the attachment on it and I will, I didn't open the attachment. I didn't have time. I was in the middle of some other stuff, but I will open the attachment and see what that, if, uh, if that's something I can make an article out of and maybe talk to you or Julie or whatever, and see if I can put something together as a separate article. I'll I talk to my it's, boss I about think it's, that. Um, it's, it's news. I think it's important. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to my boss to make sure it's okay with him. Did he think so? I, I, I imagine he will think so. But you know, I, I need to usually check with him if I'm going to write something big that I didn't, you know, he doesn't know about. Catherine, did you write this? Did you write the report? Yes, I, I did. But I have to say, it, it was done, you know, collaboratively. You know, yeah. Vic and I both hammered it out with input from committees. It's not just one person's work. None of this is one person's work. And perhaps Martha could come to your committee. And Absolutely. Yeah. Vic is the host. Anybody is welcome to our committees. You just have to tell them to send you the link, you know? So Vic, when the next time you have a committee meeting, could you send me a link? Do you have my I email? I will. I'll give you the date in just a second here. It's, okay. it's in a couple of weeks. So would would I wait to write the article till after coming to the committee meeting? No, we no. can give any information you need right now based on this level. And after uh, the meeting, March, March 23rd at 6.30, Martha. March 23rd, that's a Tuesday. Correct, okay. that's your deadline date. Right? March 23rd at 6.30 via Zoom, right? Yep. Via Zoom, okay, and Okay, that's after, okay, we have another select board meeting the previous night, okay, the 22nd, so it's not the same night. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, if you could, but I'm on the news at our Herald. Um, it's it's all lowercase, just N-E-W-S and then at sign and then O-U-R-H-E-R-A-L-D.com, news at our Herald.com. And that's my direct email because I'm the copy editor for the paper. Well, you mm -hmm. already put a little something in, or somebody put some, a little blurb about the makerspace in the slide. Yes, page. yes. I got so that I think, from, from, got, Vic and, from Vic and Dick. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's good to go ahead and follow that up with the, with the project description to date, which is what... And uh, that's what's in that attachment? Yes, the project okay. description to date. Okay. It's all narrative. There, there isn't any financial cost information there. Okay. So moving forward, um, I guess it behooves us to have a um, conversation with the, the school board or part of the school board about, um, you know, what, um, you know, how realistically they think they're <coughs> handling this, um, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and I mean, that seems all up in the air there if they're gonna have another revote on, I know it's a separate issue, but it's still, it's um, all related. It's all related, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it might be helpful to them for, for, for them to know what we are doing and who we are working with, right? Yeah. Because, because we're, we are working, we're submitting this grant on April 13th and if they can actually see that we're taking the necessary steps, maybe they'll have more confidence in us. Yeah, and we're looking at other funding sources too. Uh, Catherine and Pat and I are meeting with the Vermont Council of Rural Development on Friday. Uh, for some more advice about different grant sources uh, we've talked to other places other people and uh so you know it, we're not putting all our eggs in one basket we're trying to find out all the best uh, yeah. baskets we can <laughs> and as many uh, baskets. You know, many baskets <laughs> yeah because some some programs are more bureaucratic than others and yeah, uh, yeah. We find the sweet spot i appreciate all your efforts though i really do 
really yeah. good. Yeah. Well, uh, we feel very, very fortunate to have the people on the committee that we have. And uh, yeah, Jeff is one. And we have new people coming all the time. And uh, it just feels very positive. And I wish that positivity is what we could really, you know, energize on because it's it's happening on some really grassroots level. The word is getting out and people are responding well. <laughs> And I've started a spreadsheet on all of our contacts for grants. And I, I expect that by the time we're done, it's going to be as long as our budget spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, everybody. Good yeah. work. So um, can we put this topic to, to rest? It's definitely not done. But um, for tonight, I don't know if we can get any further on, on that. Um, we have, does any, is there anything else I see? Tony, Goopy, did you make it into the movie? Did you have something that you wanted to talk about in the library? I'll just say that we have a trustees meeting tomorrow afternoon. Okay, okay thank you. What time? Quarter of six. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, Dun. Yeah. Just FYI, um, Amy got me um, energy data for the consumption and cost data, I believe cost data, consumption data for the school. Uh, I am still awaiting uh, uh, Bonnie Bourne or Amy clarifying what some of the coding is so that I can separate the Stockbridge expenses from Rochester. <coughs> So I hope to have that soon. They don't have a lot of it digitized. I'm going to have to do a lot of data entry, but uh, we should get uh, a clearer picture of what's really going on there. OK, thank you. Um, Kirk, did you have anything that you wanted to share with us? You've been very patient um, wading through our, um, our town stuff here. What, what have we got to bring to us? Uh, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, now, I just wanted to be available. I, I know you sent out uh, my legislative updates that I had. I saw you; those were an attachment, and I just wanted to be available in case anybody had any questions or commentary, or, or to let people know they can contact me if they, they if, with any of those things. That's all. all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Yep. Thank you. So if that uh, no one has anything else I'd like to talk about, we're going to um, close this part of the meeting and, and go into executive session to have a little personnel discussion. Okay. So um, everybody, thank you all Good for, day. for coming Good in. Good night. Yep. Thank you, folks. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night.